Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Uh, today's another uh, first impressions uh, look at uh, some paper. Today it's the uh, Apica paper. Uh, here it is in a pocket notebook. And a uh, really quick look at this today. I'm not reviewing the notebook per se as the paper and as this paper is the same across a range of different books from this brand. Just a very quick little uh, brief comment on this particular book as I just have one thing in particular to say. For, that is, I really like this binding. Um, it was the first thing that struck me about this book when I got my hands on it. Uh, it's a nice sort of thermo cloth uh, binding with a, a two uh, signature stitched um, uh, paper inside. Uh, and it's nice and sort of flexible so that allowing the paper to uh, sit relatively flat uh, on the bench once it's sort of being used. So um, what I've done is I've just done some basic sort of little uh, writing tests in uh, the back of the book and then we'll do a little writing sample in it as we go. So I've chosen a range of different inks from a range of different companies in different nibs and pens and wetnesses and all those sorts of things uh, including a couple of inks that I wanted to see how they behaved in terms of shading and sheen on this paper and for instance the uh, Robert Oster inks uh, are well known for their sheen uh, so I, I had a bit of a play with with that and as you can see um, there's a tiny little bit to be had on the soda pop and on tranquility and then a couple of pops on deep sea so it is able uh, to be found on this paper. So I used the Twisby Eco with a 1.1 stub nib with Robert Oster soda pop blue, a uh, Lummy medium nib uh, with Aurora Blue Black, a Pilot Metropolitan, that's a medium, uh, with a Pilot Namiki Black cartridge, uh, a Jin Hao 675 with Robert Oster Tranquility, that's sort of a cross between a medium and a fine, but it's quite a nice wet writer, allowing for some of that lovely shading. A Sailor 1911 Standard with a music nib, nice and broad and wet, with Daimene Syrah, uh, and then a Jin Hao 159 with a Goulet 1.5mm nib of Noodler's Lexington Grey, and then finished with a Robert Oster Deep Sea in a Pilot Metropolitan with a fine nib. Um, now, just to compare the back of this page with the fountain pens, there's no bleeding. A couple of tiny spots from the Deep Sea, but not even enough to really mention. And there's no feathering. Uh, which is really great, but what's really impressive is just the lack of ghosting. Um, you know, when you work with Leuchtturm paper or uh, even uh, some other brands of, of well-known brands of note paper, uh, you do still get ghosting. Here, there's virtually none. Uh, so it's it's a really good quality paper in that respect. Um, here's Emerald of Cheval with some of that lovely uh, sparkle and sheen sort of coming through. A brush pen with Sailor Gentle Black. A Lamy ballpoint pen of this double O highlighter just to see how that works on here. A Sharpie fine line and a Sharpie ultra fine marker. Palomino Blackwing, uh, Blackwing 602 pencil. Uh, as you can see, it rubs out relatively nicely uh, without too much effort. And then I put some Noodler's Liberties Elysium, which is a, a, a bit of a mongrel of an ink in a lot of ways, into a flex nib just to see what would happen. Uh, and I noted here that it had an excellent dry time. It dried really quickly, in fact, um, much faster than just about any other paper I've tried this on. Um, it's not super absorbent paper. Uh, it's still sort of quite smooth and as you can see from the ghosting and the bleed over here there's virtually you know nothing coming through um, but it did dry quite quickly which was really nice um, as you can see on the back of that page the only thing that sort of really bled through was we well, can see the the brush pen and the emerald of because they're quite big wet pens uh, but the sharpie ultra fine marker came through and virtually nothing from the flex which is really good to see uh, so that's a, once again a really big tick for this paper I've noted here, the paper has a slight tooth to it. It's not as waxy smooth as, say, Rodia uh, or Clairefontaine or anything like that. Uh, and it's uh, and certainly not as, uh, as smooth as the Life Stationery uh, Symphony Notebook, which I reviewed previous to this. In terms of water resistance, this was Robert Oster Deep Sea. Uh, and as the paper is not super absorbent, we did lose most of uh, the... All, well, all of the detail and basically treated the ink like a watercolour. It's not a water resistant ink, but on a really absorbent paper you do still maintain some of the original detail. Now for sheen, I chose Blackstone Blue Cypress today, and you can really see that ink sheens. Like that 
you know, that's a high sheening ink. But on this paper, once again, not super absorbent, so it did sheen really nicely. Now, just in terms of comparison, we'll go back to this page with the, the back of the uh, the fountain pen. Here is the page I, I sampled from the Life Stationery uh, notebook with a, a selection of inks. And if we look at the reverse, you can see there's ghosting here. Um, and once again, it's only really the Sharpie marker that uh, bled through in a little bit of uh, Noodler's 54th. Um, but these, these papers really... Uh, stand up to fountain pen ink, but what sets the Apica apart over the life stationery in my opinion is the fact that there's just so little ghosting uh, And in terms of the paper weight there there's in fact I think the life stationery is a slightly heavier paper uh, and certainly waxier than the um, Apica So I thought I'd just do a quick little writing sample uh, now just to sort of um, You know show how the pen works how the paper works in action I have here my Faber-Castell Loom, uh, which I've inked with one of my favourite inks for a number of reasons, uh, Der Tremendous uh, Giuseppe Verdi, uh, a nice wet ink in a really wet uh, nib, um, and quite a smooth nib, and we'll just sort of see how uh, it all sort of goes down. Now this is labelled as a medium, but it really is quite a broad uh, medium. As you can see, uh, this is a wet ink and it's, you know, and it's really not sort of absorbing uh, into the paper at all. Um, I'll just do, you know, a couple of little, uh, little tests, so give it a bit of a, a workout. And then I'll just do a sort of little wetness thing. Um, and yeah, super wet. You can see how little is actually being absorbed uh, into the paper on that uh, wetness test there. Um, now, that's still drying, but if we look over on the back, nothing has, has come through there sort of at all. A uh, little tiny bit of ghosting, but as I said, super wet, big dark ink in a really wet nib, and it's performed really well. So, just to summarise, I'm really impressed with this paper. I'm really impressed with uh, the quality, the feel, and also how it performs with a number of different pens and pencils. Uh, and yeah, it's just a really well-behaved paper. Um, I would, I, I love this paper. I would use it for just about anything. If it, if I could get it easily in a nice sort of big hardbound dot grid, I'd use it for just about everything. So this was the uh, Apica paper seen here in the pocket little pocket notebook um, so yeah if you're looking for fountain pen friendly paper this comes in a number of different uh, options in terms of the the lines and the the way it's bound and all those sorts of things so um, check it out I got this from uh, Goulet pens and they have a large range of it there it's also available from a number of other retailers both here in Australia and internationally um, so yeah check it out it's a really really nice Japanese paper, they know what they're doing over there. That was the Apica Notebook. If you like this video and found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up uh, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notifications button if uh, you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. And in the meantime, uh, please drop me a, a message or a, if you've got any questions or information or products you'd like me to look at or anything like that, you can either do that here on YouTube or at my blog or Instagram or Twitter, which is all linked below. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching and until next time, enjoy your pens and enjoy your paper and I'll talk to you later.